Good evening and welcome to Main Field on this long day. We've already had two games in the consolation rounds. Now we get into the championship rounds. Four games here today. I believe there's a JV football game afterwards. It's for a long day at Manning Field. This is St. Mary's at Lynn Classical. Both teams pitched shutouts. Classical defeated Tech. St. Mary's defeated English. So they're both 1-0 looking for their second win. Patty Curran, the coach of St. Mary's, got her first varsity win as a St. Mary's coach in the last game, looking to go 2-0. Jessica Gambali, who does a very nice job, terrific job, bowling classical. Looking to go 2-0. And, oh. and they both scored some goals. St. Mary scored nine. Classical scored seven. St. Mary's got seven in the first half. Blocked and knocked away. That was Maloney knocking it away. Sophie Skabik has got a hat trick in that first game. It's a little different. It's, it's a gray, it's not a white ball. I looked, I said, I can't see that. The ball they're using is usually milk white and black. This is gray and black. So it kind of blends into the, the field. Skabikas with it. Nice little shift. Trying to get it to the net. Goalie had it, couldn't hold on to it. Come out, and she's going to get caught. This will be the first time you see the goalie called for knocking a player down. Megan Baker came all the way out, just the 10 yard line, looking for the ball, and she ran into Maloney and knocked her down. And from just outside the 10 yard line, Skavikas will get a free kick straight on, almost like a penalty kick. They move St. Mary's picket fence back a little bit. Goals an opportunity for St. Mary's to get on the board. Skopikas pointing to the official that they moved now the classical player back. She was sneaking up. Skabikas knocked it right into the middle of that pile of defenders and Skabikas gets knocked down and she'll get another kick, this one coming from inside the 25. He passed up on the shot. Classical took it away. St. Mary's gets it back. Skabik is looking for it, broken up. It's Kabikas and Skabikas. Isabel is six, Sophie is seven. And you might see the geese flying around right in front of us because they're landing right in the stands. One of the geese found a McDonald's bag with food in it. She's having a picnic. Now they're all coming around. They're right up in the, in the seats. Skabik is short. Just getting a hand on it. Baker 
just reached and got a hand on it and tipped it up over the net. That was going in. So one of the geese is having a picnic with the bag from McDonald's that, that she found, or he found. A couple hanging around think, thinking he might share it, but it doesn't look like it. And they're all right in front of me. There's five of them landing right here. Now there's six of them all over the stands. I don't think they bought a ticket to get in. From long range. High over the net. That was Brianna Maloney, I think. There's two of them. Brooke Maloney is the other one. Maloney over slid it and it gets knocked out. Hey, maybe we'll put it in play. One more after this, it'll be St. Mary's taking on Lynn Tech. I didn't knock it deep and can't. Haskell has it blocked. They knock it deep. St. Mary's will get it down deep. And they call it offside. Late call. She went. Got the ball. As soon as she got the ball, turned around to make a pass. Then he blew the whistle and said offside. Out off classical. And he didn't follow the rules throwing the ball in. That, that drives me crazy because all you have to do is just throw it in. But if you don't get two hands over your head throwing it in, then you blow the whistle and you turn it over. The mirrors couldn't keep it in and went out of play. Right next to the mirror's bench here, they throw it in. They knock it deep, they knock it too deep. Tipped up. Bounces off Skabikas back to the St. Mary's end. Banged ahead. Broken up. Bodies go down. Free kick coming from the near side. Out in front, loose. Glasgow got a foot on it, but knocked it wide. That was Parker, I think. Gianna Parker. Gianna Parker plays up front. Liliana Parker is a defender. A 
Oscar picks off the pass, knocks it back. Eleni Echeverria, eighth grader in net for St. Mary's. Well, one Skopi gets to another, try to tip it to Maloney, didn't get a lot on the pass, picked off. Trying to knock it deep, Maloney keeping it alive. She's so quick, outstanding softball player. She's a very good basketball player and decided not to play this past year. Skabikas with it. Trying to tip it ahead. Deflect it off St. Mary's. They'll track it down. Down deep. And we got a takedown. I don't think it was in the zone. It was just outside the zone, so it won't be a penalty kick. Out in front, off a of body. They get the shot, they knock it home. It got knocked out in front. It got loose. Samiri's got a foot on it and knocked it home. Georgia Allaire, I believe, is going to get credit for the goal. Came from the corner, hit a couple of people out in front, laid down out in front, and Allaire was able to get a foot on it and bang it home. Oh, St. Mary's grabs a one nothing lead. Maloney got a foot on it. Looked like she had an opportunity to get a good hard shot off. She shanked it a little bit and went wide left. Trying to make it 2 nothing. So there's some offensive power coming back this year with both Kabikas and Maloney. And all three of those used to be basketball players. They're all on St. Mary's teams that won a state championship. And then he decided he didn't want to play, they want to concentrate on soccer. Maloney's case, you want to concentrate on soccer and softball. And she's an outstanding outfielder. I haven't seen a better one in all the years I've been doing this. She's so quick.
They bang it off. Same mirrors. Down deep. Sliding and making the save. And it goes out. St. Mary's will get a corner kick. The other great athlete they have coming back is Pella Oumi. As a seventh and eighth grader, she helped St. Mary's win back to back state basketball championships. And she's already got offers from se several big colleges, and she's only a sophomore. She does a good job on the soccer field as well. And her sister Angelina is trying to follow in her footsteps. She's an eighth grader now on the soccer team, and she was a very good player on the basketball team. They're going to be reckoned with in basketball. They won three consecutive state championships. Then last year, everybody said, this is the year they're gonna, everybody's gonna catch it. They're, they're not gonna have a good year because the off season, they lost not one, not two, but three 1,000 point scorers. If you lose one, it's a little bit of a drop off. They lost three and all they did was go to the final four and lose to the team that won the state championship in a very close game. And he only had one senior on the team, so they got everybody back. Back checking nicely. Back checking by Della Rocha, only a freshman. They give it back to Echeverria. The eighth grader in net. Skabikas is going to get called for a takedown. Actually, a little hip check by Sophie Skabikas. Costco will get the free kick. From the 40 yard line. Headed away. The official on top of the play didn't make the call. The official upfield called contact on classical. The other official was right on the play, standing right there. Didn't make the call. Mary's pass picked off. St. Mary's returns the favor. With a rush. Skabika circling. Takes the left footed shot. It got deflected. And Baker was way out of the net looking for that shot. It went by her, but it went wide.
corner kick coming up. Skips past everybody, diving and falling out like recovering a loose ball. It was Baker, but she wound up out of play. And after that corner kick came from the far side, now the corner kick will come from the near side. And I think it's Sophie's Kabik that's going to take it. We're halfway through and counting this first half of this championship round of the annual Lynn City Tournament. That was Angelina Awumi breaking it up. Skavik is trying to give the pass back, but there was nobody there. Della Rocha got kind of Cut off, she couldn't get back. Parker breaking. Stepping in front, breaking it up. That's Awumi. Ella Awumi was back playing defense. Short, Baker makes the save off Skabikas. Skabikas has not seen a shot she doesn't like because she's anywhere near any place. She lets it fly. He'll kick it all the way back to Echeverria. Here he's right back at it. Trying to get around the defense. Can't. Tip, rolled. Baker will come out and grab it. I think this is Baker's first ever try at being a goalkeeper. Cutting it to the middle, taking the shot, goes wide right. Beat a couple of defenders. And we're going to get the shot. It was either Fiona Dunn or Kaylee Patterson, one of the two. And with just over 17 minutes left in his first half, we're saying maybe he's leading one to nothing. We got a timeout. They come out of the timeout. We're saying he was leading it one to nothing off the goal by Georgia Alea. This one game where they should have, a, the officials should. Turn around, look up at the press box and say, number 16 or number 15 or number 52, they should notify who scores the goal. Like the officials that go over to the official scorer in hockey and give them not only the goal but the assist. Because being this far away with the numbers, and especially in the girls' games where they a lot of the girls wear their hair long, and I mean long. Oh, three quarters of the way. Down the back, they knock it home. The ball popped loose from around the 20 yard line. They drilled it, and it went past the hand of the goaltender. Isabella Skavikas.
That was just classical, blocked it, it deflected right to Skabikas, and she said, I'll just throw it to the net and see what happens. And Baker was favoring the near post, and Skabikas threw it in the far post. Maloney, trying to walk around, has deflected away, and she lets it go out off classical. Kubikas is, they, they missed it. They, hopefully Kubikas got the shot on that. Baker made the save, popped it in the air, right on the doorstep. I think it was a woomy. Went up to try and get a head on it, and she popped it. Instead of popping it in the net, she popped it straight up in the air, and, and it bounced and went out of play. So Klausel got a big break there. That was very close to three to nothing. Shot. Didn't miss by much going wide right. That was a good bid by Cameron Dunn. Haskell having a hard time getting it out of their own end. Pass behind everybody, gets it back. And now they kick it back to Echeverria. And St. Mary's very quickly takes it back to the classical end. Sandry pass is blocked. Blocked again. Skabikas to Skabikas. Still with it. Still has it. Her pass is blocked. Haskell takes it away. And St. Mary's. Louis Norton gets there. Again, Jim Harris taking it right back to the Glasgow Inn. It's been all St. Mary's. Skabikas kicks it all the way back to Echeverria. That's the only action Echeverria has had in his first half. And St. Mary's moving it nicely. Gets by, down the far side, trying to hit a Wumi out in front. Nice defense by Classical. And he threw it too far. It's going to go out of play. Go through it in, so he was going to head on it and went out of play again. And now Classical knocks it out. And we'll, we'll put it in play. Blocked. Sim Harris gets it back. Skavikas lines up the shot and it skips through and goes in. Baker can't believe she didn't block the shot. She was an amazing player. She likes that left foot kick. 
She got it off, little ground ball. Bank, I can't believe she didn't stop it. It went right by and in. And St. Mary's grabs a 3 nothing lead. And Skabikas has got four goals in the tournament. So the mountain for classical to climb has got a lot taller. And again, right back in the classical end. Not going to get around. And maybe he's lost it out of play. And last one will get to kick it away. Headed back, Skabigas heads it as well. Haskell took it away, same here, he takes it back. Right where it's been most of this half in the classical end. <clears throat> A woman couldn't tip it by. Let's go knocks it deep. Hodge <coughs> knocked it up. Glasgow coming back. Hustling and keeping it in. For classical was Juarez. Now picked off by St. Mary's. Kabikas with a nice little turnaround. Picked off Papazoglu, who knocks it to the middle. Blocked. Picked off by St. Mary's. Ohumi was it? Knocks it deep over the head of Baker into the net. Baker came way out. Awumi just knocked it high in the air. It went over Baker. Once it went over her, it was in the net. St. Mary's has built up a 4 nothing cushion. Just under 10 minutes left in this first half. Glasgow's been hit with a couple of hard right hands and they haven't been anywhere near Echeverria in net. And now here comes St. Mary's, right back. They knock it deep, Baker will play it on a hop and kick it away. Sophie Skabikas, broken up, gets it back to Lily Norton. Sophie takes it away. And he knocks it back to Echeverria. Gives it to McGuire on the far side and went out of play. This is the deepest penetration Classical has made in a very long time. 
They've been basically in their own end. And it's cost them dearly. Glasgow Knox into the St. Mary's bench area. Elaine Echeverria in net for St. Mary's could have bought a ticket for this one. The only time she touched the ball is when her own team knocks it back to her. The peak is broken up. Oscar taking it back. He'll give it back to Echeverria, who kicks it away. St. Mary's picks up the loose ball. Nice defense by Glasgow. They try to, if they get it by, it's going to be one St. Mary's player on the goaltender. What a nice defensive play by Katie Rouse. Skabikas with it, pushing it up. Had it knocked away. Glasgow will kick it away. Picked off. Shot blocked nicely by Glasgow. Skabikas with it. Trying to get a shot off. It got blocked. Trickled up here. The five-yard line. Picked off by St. Mary's. Patterson looking for it. Patterson takes it away. Gets by a couple. Gets by again. They finally block a shot. Rouse blocked the shot. Great bid by Patterson. Patterson is a seventh grader. He had a couple of really nice moves. Substitution for St. Mary's. McGuire knocks it upfield. Knocked into the classical bench area off classical. Pass a little bit behind the intended receiver. Ramirez keeps it alive. Put it deep, gets by Patterson. Baker comes out. He got a big break there. Baker come out, blocked it. It deflected, the net was wide open, and a St. Mary's player coming right down the middle couldn't get to the ball. She would have had a wide open net. All she had to do was just tip it in. Baker trying to clear it, knocked it off one of her players, and it deflected right out in the middle of the field with a wide open net. Now again, they kick it all the way back. Echeverria. 
she gets it to the other side to Kaylee Johnson. Skabikas overran it. Nice job by Rouse to break it up. Norton with it. Her pass is picked off. Hassel coming back, broken up nicely by Norton. They knock it deep. Patterson is going to get there first. Baker was coming out, trying to get it. He's got to hurry back to get back in the net. Classical knocks it out. St. Mary's will get a corner kick. Corner kick goes way wide behind the net. Two minutes and counting left in this one. The clock will shut off. The officials will regulate the last two minutes time-wise. They knock it deep. St. Mary's will give it back to Echeverria. And she gives it to Maguire. St. Mary's will bring it up as they get a knockdown. St. Mary's will get the free kick from the, their own 40 yard line. So he was getting out quickly and adding to it, getting four here in the first half with time winding down. As I see time winding down, they blow the whistle and the half comes to an end. So a big first half in this 2024 championship girls version of the Lynn City Tournament. St. Mary's halfway to the championship. For the big first half, it's St. Mary's four, classical nothing at halftime. Welcome back as we set to start the second half. English, uh, excuse me, again, a long day. We've had all kinds of games. This is the third game of the day. St. Mary's has jumped out to a quick four nothing lead. Georgia Alea cut the first. The Skabikas is first, Sophie, and then Isabel got the second and third. And then the young sophomore, Bella Awumi, outstanding basketball player, got the fourth. And that's where we are, four to nothing. And this championship round. Of the girls win soccer tur tournament. If St. Mary's wins this one, the boys will try to make it two for two when they take on Lynn Tech. Glasgow broken up. That first half, Glasgow could not get the ball out of their own end. They didn't come close to challenging Echeverria, the goaltender. Yeah, with it, trying to get by, and I got, she knocked it out of play. St. 
Sophie's Kabika's trying to get around. Does. Got knocked off balance and lost it. And it gets knocked deep. This will be the first time that Etcheverry will come out and play it at the 10 yard line that's not being kicked by her own team. That one came from Classical, from very long range. They knock it deep. It skips past. I don't think she may have expected to be anywhere near there. Shot. Baker again was way out of the net. Out almost just outside the goal and almost to the one or two yard line. And just got a piece of that shot by Skabikas. Maloney kicks a ground ball, gets it back, drills it toward the net, and it gets tipped by St. Mary's, and they tip it wide, and it goes out of play. Pretty good little crowd today at these games. Here he keeps it in. Ball bouncing. Maloney with it. Trying to get around. Trying to throw it out in front. And it got knocked out. A woman will come down and get in the middle. She's like a big rebounder in basketball looking for the kick out in front. She put it right on the money, and it just hit the top of the crossbar and tipped over. That was Isabel Skabikas looking for her second. She nailed it dead center, and it just slid on top of the crossbar and slid over. She was about a foot away from getting her second goal. Glasgow breaks it up. St. Mary's knocks it back in the Glasgow end. Headed away by Norton. Knocked deep. Foot race. St. Mary's gets there first. Maloney helps out, coming back, picking up the loose ball. They tip it ahead. They knock it deep. Isabel Skabikas to Sophie. Baker came way out of the net, almost to the five-yard line, way over to the near side. She was very lucky that they didn't pull the ball away because that left the net wide open. Skabikas shot it over the net and out of play. And Rouse will get to kick it away. That was a long pass from Skabikas to Skabikas. And Baker came way out of the net. Maloney can't get around Rouse. Rouse knocks it out. It'll be a throw-in, not a penalty kick or a corner kick. They left it. For Maloney, but they're going to call Maloney offside. She's 
she's behind everybody when she got the pass. He just had it taken away. Norton came up, tipped it away, and Norton gets a head on it. They let it go out of play. Norton with it again. She's a pretty good basketball player, too. Skabigas to Skabigas. They tip it up to Maloney. Went off her foot. Rouse picked it off. A very nice takeaway by Dunn. And the ball's going to go out of play into the St. Mary's bench area. And again, Glasgow can't get the ball out of their own end. Skabikas. Shot. Baker will make the save. Off the turnaround shot by Andrea Basta. Get a whistle. Papazoglu got taken down. Costco will get a free kick. Knock it deep, nobody's there. And Glasgow was just knocking into the St. Mary's bench area. Nice little spin move by Dunn. Skabik has had it blocked, tips it. Maloney will hustle and keep it in. I knock it deep to Skabik as Rouse gets there first and knocks it out. Maloney puts it in play. Skabikas has it knocked out. Now they're saying Skabikas lost it. And they're calling a little bit of a bump on Maloney. That's not much of a play. Rouse will get Rouse will get the free kick. Skips by everybody. Papa's ugly looking for a break. Bodies go down as the ball goes out of play. And they'll call it off hot. Here he picks it off and starts it right back. And once again, right back. Long lead pass down the near side. Nice little shift to go inside. Baker got a piece of the shot and it goes out of play. Again, Baker came way out of the net. 
Andrea Basta almost got that buyer. Question of whether it would have gone inside the far post or not. But Baker just got a piece and knocked it out, and Maloney will take the corner kick coming from the far side. Pascal knocks it out. And once again, it stays in the classical end. Skavikas broken up. That was Angelina Awumi coming up to break up the play. Glasgow will get to kick it away. Yeah, he's right back at it. Only trying to get it out in front. Block, knocked down, deflected away. That might have been Marissa Stone. Oscar with the throw in. <laughs> Isabella Skabikas got by one, but she didn't see the person coming behind her. Sophie Skabik is trying to get loose, takes the shot and knocks it home. That's her fifth goal in two games. Her second in this game. It was Isabella making the rush. She, did, she beat one, but she didn't realize that coming from behind knocked it away. And then Sophie got loose. This time she went with the right foot. Went around the defense and just ripped it in. And it's five to nothing. St. Mary's. Maloney knocks it ahead. That was Bastard trying to knock it to the net. Baker came way over. Glasgow put it in play. Uh, looked like they might be. They are going to have it. This is the deepest penetration they've had here in the second half. They have not been able to get out of their own end. When they do, St. Mary's takes it away and brings it right back to the classical end. They bang it out off classical. And with just about 25 minutes left. Five to nothing, St. Mary's, we got a timeout. Both teams come out of the timeout. Which the Mary's rolling on to a 5 nothing lead. Sophie Skabikas, who was 
One of the better players in the state has Etcheverry getting set to kick it away. She's got five goals in two games. Hustle keep it in. That's the very first shot on that. He took it away. And Mia Duncan drilled it. And Hatcheria made the save. That's the closest they've come. And the only shot that had any chance. Because they haven't been at St. Mary's End for very long. Haskell takes it away. They had Parker breaking, but the pass went behind her. And when she finally takes the shot, it goes way wide right. Osco boys and St. Mary's boys are in the back of the end zone, getting loose. Take on what will be the last game, last soccer game of the day. The championship boys game went classical, St. Mary's. Both looking to go 2 and 0 on the season. Excuse me. Tackle looking to go 1-0-1. One, oh, and one. Their win came in a shootout, and in the MAA rule book, it's a tie. St. Mary's moving it up. Isabel Skabikas. Her pass picked off, deflected. <laughs> A woman knocked it upfield. Norton got a little twinge in her back when she tried to make that contact. She got hit, collided. St. Mary's will get the free kick. Norton holding her back. From long range, it goes wide to the left. And again, Baker likes to come way out of the net. It cost her against Awumi. Awumi drilled the shot long. If she was in the net, she makes the easy save. But she was way out and went over her head, her head and into the net. That last goal in the, in the first half. Knocked out by St. Mary's. Both teams will make the substitution. McGuire is coming in. Norton's going out. Probably, you probably saw her flexing her back a little bit. And they're checking her back as she goes to the sideline. Knocked away and bodies go down. And one body stays down. That was Pepper Zoglu, but she's getting up. We're hap happy and thankful for that. I have to say, not in obviously not in all cases, but in a lot of cases, the boys' teams flop a lot more than the girls team. Girls go down at times, but they get back up. 
boys go down like they're shot from a gun and stay down for a while. And then they jump back up and run back into play. The stoppage is checking on Papa Zoglu to make sure she's okay. And she's staying in. She was pressed into service last year to become a goaltender. That cost class a little bit because she plays very well up front. Glasgow with the free kick as we're halfway through and counting this second half of this championship game. Haskell gets stuffed, can't get the shot off. And he kick it up field. Skavikas. Trying to get around, couldn't. And when she couldn't get around, she knocked Juarez down. That's a real, we'll get to kick it away. We'll have a substitution first. Knocked up field. Juarez gets there first, gets a foot on it, knocks it deep, and nobody there as it goes out of play. Can't you really get to kick it away? Just pushes it over the hutch. There's misconnections, but they get it back. They go clear across field to Johnson. Up to Skibikas. They knock it deep. She lost it, trying to set it up to get around the defense. That was Andrea Basta. They knock it deep. So maybe he's trying to center it. Baker will come all the way out of the net, way over to the far side, pick off the loose ball, and she'll kick it away. Didn't get a lot on it. Just pushed it out of play near the St. Mary's bench area. Down deep. Got tipped and knocked out. I think they're going to call it off St. Mary's. I'll have a substitution for classical. McKenna Duncan will get to kick it away. No, it's not. It's Rouse kicking it away. 
all the way back to Echeveria, over to Maguire. Riley Maguire is finishing up a great career at St. Mary's. Outstanding defender. Up and make the tournament, go deep in the tournament. Her four years here. She's been a very steady player. Skip past everybody. Clear across field to Maguire. Ahead to Skavikas. We haven't, with the score, five to nothing. We haven't seen Brooke Maloney or Sophie Skavikas almost the entire half. Back to Maguire. Johnson with a nice little shift. Skapik is battling. Banging going on. <laughs> Pushing and shoving. Now told by classical. And see if we will make a couple of changes. Bicycle kick keeps it alive. I might have been Fiona Dunn. She's a seventh grader. Get up, kick it over, behind the net, out of play. Addison, who just came in, looking to walk in, still with it. It's loose. Baker will fall on it. Patterson went around, through, and over a couple of defenders. It just slipped off her foot, and it rolled in, and Baker was able to come out and grab it. Patterson, she's a pretty good little basketball player, too. She's only a seventh grader. Tipped ahead. Skabikas. <coughs> Trying to walk in. 
<coughs> written off the play. Center it <coughs> blocked. We had a whistle for something. I think they call Angelina Owumi for the contact. Pushing it up, done with it. Trying to center it, there's nobody there except the white shirt. It got picked off. They knock it deep, a woman got a piece of it, broke it up. Parker knocks it ahead. And St. Mary's will let it go out. <coughs> Final 10 minutes in counting. <coughs> so St. Mary's is going to be the 2024 Lynn City Tournament champion. So now we're just under nine minutes left in the game. St. Mary's comfortably on top, five to nothing. We got a timeout down on the field. If Mary shows me well and a couple of people have also said the same thing as I'm about to say. This would be three in a row for St. Mary's. Angelina Awumi will take the kick. An eighth grader. She's a big girl for eighth grade. Pretty good basketball player. They knock it deep, foot race. Awumi gets there first. And takes it away, nice little spin move. And knocks it away. And it's taken away nicely by Caroline Hotch. Grace Hotch is a sophomore. Caroline is a senior. So we got the Maloneys, we got the Skabigases, we have the Hotches, we have the Awumis. It's a family affair at St. Mary's. Traffic all over the place on the over the far side and there's a police cruiser with their lights on trying to get through the traffic. And you see here you, that Looked like it was going to hook right in the middle of the net. And Severia made the save. I think that was done. Mia, I see Mia Duncan. Because there's two of those. Mia and McKenna. Locked and knocked out. And 
Etchemy will get to kick it away. Gives it to Awumi. And this is Sophie's could this is Sophie's could be because we just came back. Looking to walk in. Nice defense. Good takeaway. Good defense by McKenna Duncan. I think that was Alia and both Patterson looking to tip it by and go one on one with the goaltender. McKenna Duncan took it away. Haka swung and missed, trying to kick it to the net. Patterson kicked it by Rose, but couldn't go get it. Now she blocked it, couldn't go get it again. And now it's finally knocked out by McKenna Duncan. We reached the five minute mark. Scoreboard clock will be shut down. The officials will handle the clock on the field. And we got to take down Juarez trying to get around. Sophie's Kabikas knocked her down. Kabika's got it right out in front of the net. Looks like Shamiri's got a head on it. Now they say no, they say Classical got a head on it, knocked it up over the net and out of play. And Skabikas will get a corner kick coming from the near side. So as we're winding this one down, Shamiri's is going to go to 2 and 0. Oh. Classical is going to drop to 1 and 1. And that'll give the St. Mary's boys a chance to make it two for two. They knock it back. Skabikas drills it and going off a foot out in front. I think that was Mia Duncan. She's only a freshman. She got a foot on it and knocked it out. And they get it again. And Skabik is trying to drill it. Juarez and Rouse both broke it up. Back checking Cameron Dunn took it away. And St. Mary's got a foot on it and knocked it out. Can't be a lot of time left. A little bit of second half for Classical. They had a little bit of time in St. Mary's end. They had virtually no time in the first half. A little bit of time. They got a couple of shots on net from a distance. And it was only one to nothing St. Mary's in this second half. As Papazog will get taken down. They got a free kick from outside the 15 yard line. It was 4 nothing in the first half, so it's only been 1 nothing here in the second half, so they can build from that. They've made a little bit of progress, and they won't be playing in the GBL League teams as strong as this St. Mary's team. Papazoglu will take the kick left-footed, pops it, and shanked it a little bit off to the left side. And we're waiting now, just waiting for the official to blow the whistle. Mm -hmm. 
Aka takes it away. Her shot would have gone wide into the side of the net. Echeverria come out and caught it. And she'll kick it away. Moves it up the field, it gets by everybody. Classical picks it off. Ralph's trying to walk in. It got tipped and knocked out, and they're calling it off Classical. I often wonder when, I, when they do these what the officials could possibly be waiting for. The score is five to nothing. He can't have the fans yelling, what are you doing? There's three minutes left because the fans can't, there's no clock. It's been shut off the last five minutes. And I always worry about somebody being hurt in a game like this. If it's once or nothing, it's one thing. Or even two to nothing. But when it's five to nothing, I don't know why they just don't say, you know what? It's over. Shot from long range. Baker running to her left, grabs it, holds on, kick it away. And we're still going on. Now they finally blow it, and that's going to do it. So Echeverria will get her second shutout in two games. St. Mary's, for the third year in a row, we're, we're thinking, wins the Lynn City Soccer Tournament, and they do it with two shutouts. They shut English out. Now they shut Glasgow out. It was Georgia Alea getting a goal fairly early. And we have the assistant athletic director over at the 50-yard line giving out the trophy. So way over at midfield on the far side, they'll be packing, passing out the championship trophy. Alea got the first goal. Skabikas just took over. Sophie got one. Isabel got one to make it three, and Bella Awumi from deep hit a line shot with Baker way out of the net, went over ahead into the net from long range, made it 4 nothing at halftime, and then Sophie Skabikas added a goal in the second half to make it five, and that was the final score. So St. Mary's goes to 2 and 0 oh. Costco will go to 1-1. One and one. And now they get back into swing of things, getting into league play. St. Mary's in the Catholic Central League, Classical in the Greater Boston League. And we wish them both tremendous success. We hope they'll do extremely well as they try to qualify for the state tournament. We'll look. The presentations of the trophy will be over at midfield. St. Mary's, they normally do, takes a run across the field from one side to the other. And they'll have to hustle back for the trophy presentation. Way over on the far side. I don't know if they give an MVP. If they do, I would guess it would be Sophia Skavikas with her five goals. St. Mary's scores 14. She got five of them. And they're waiting to make the presentation of the championship trophy to coach and captain. So 
Congratulations, Patty Curran, who gets her first Lynn City Tournament Championship. Sophia Skabikas is the MVP and the championship trophy will be presented to St. Mary's, their captains. So the captains will come out, Brett Maloney grabs it and holds it on, and St. Mary's will win it for what we believe is the third straight year as they have their second shutout of the tournament and a defeat went classical by a score of five to nothing. So congratulations to Patty Curran on her first two wins as the new head coach and her first win in as a champion of the 2024 Lynn City Tournament. And congratulations to Sophie Sabikas for the MVP award for this tournament. So five nothing, St. Mary's over classical. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman saying we'll see you next time.